ông quay chụp ông tập đẹp cam to cái tập đoàn cam tệ phi sạm mạc ca sạm mạc ca nó thay đi ông đẹp thừa sạm mạc ca một tô sẽ đập sắc hay cam đại chiêm ninh hình thuần hay một lần một tô sạm mạc ca sạm mạc ca sẽ đập sắc hay cam đại chiêm ninh ông chỉ mới đặt xong chỉ biết chun đầm đằng đập phía kia trong cái sạm mạc ca sạm mạc ca thay đi thả lục du tơ ra đại chiết chấm chiết lục ảo vật là miên đại mùa là hết miên tu rẽ để chăm bách mình ai cho rôm được không cái chấm đại ca sam đại ca đi bán còn to bây giờ bàn bị kêu dụ bò như mình đang mình đại chấm cầm bình xét này ông nhập ra sản lợn bốn dương bàn bị đại chăng tăng lục chấm cầm thu mình đi đại chiết chấm cầm một đồng hàng việc kí chiết chấm đồ còn lại chấm cầm du tơ ra đại là bàn ảo vật là miên này này đi hay tầm đồng chi ảo vật là miên ai chạy một bậc tì chẳng cứ dương sam đại thà là hốt đầu tiên ai chấm cầm dù ở trá miền hoặc là miền đường miền là tập hiệp ai chỗ rùm là không bằng pin kia được cách như không cách làm ca sản mặt cá nơi ông nhập ra là tập bồn bình bàn hay ca sản phải nhịp ai lừa bắt phải nhặt này bị thiên chặt thật bằng buôn buôn này bị thiên tây không được bỏ ông nhập ra vì tầm anh trong tổ lạc ca cao phục chi và chỉ bắt đầu thế này lục em hỏi là đi ca bị thằng là biết bắt đầu miền ảo bắt đầu miền phía kia nâng bốc cô để ông nhập ra có hành chơi ở chỗ rùm được không cách làm ca sản mặt cá thay này Sông Group Lục Thiên, xâm rạp sau vận ác cá thay ní. Cả làm chí có xâm quả khởi thá, cục phía kỳ thương ổ này rừng cái này miên vật tầm miên. Đối lại lúc nguồn chí miên vật tầm miên nô vận tục khung khuôn khẳng cọm xa sau vận ác cá ní. Đối lúc xin áo xóm lẹ bóng xích miên vật tầm miên đổi tốt bì vận tục sau vận ác cá nô thay ní. Đi khắt lẹ bóng xích rồi bỏ lúc nguồn chí bán bọc cổ đó cả làm chí rụi hời. Nẹ chùm đi anh đã trâu nông đó sẽ khai cam bằng to nô thay ní cứ lúc hình thuần lúc miền bắc miền núi hải được không còn tục sau nà cani sôm ở quân lục thiền bảo ở quân hay chỉ là bốn đi ông chỉ biết làm rạch được sau nào xong rồi bảo chuẩn chụp chọn nôn chia chỉ muốn sẵn ông chỉ biết bảo là tu lịch khách xong lẹp bằng sắt cho rôm thạnh nà cà để to là không một tục thạnh nà cà ni rồi bảo chuẩn chụp chọn nôn chia cho thay gì đập vào mũi khai miền địa chín năm vì pon đập vào mũi lại bàn mình chạy tha để con miền bảy hai sáu cấp hiệp chưa có ba chưa chuẩn cây mình ai quy du bán mình ai chọn làm mình du nâng đầm bay miền là tập hiệp cho rôm thạnh nà cà được thay càng mốc ở miền bắc thật tập hiệp luôn thông lệ bằng sách châu rùm nâng biên vật miền đại phật to nâng không một tốc sạm nạc ca nâng ngay chi đập bổ mui khai mình nia chi nam bị bọn đập bổ mui và khơi cầm nát hết bên đất thổ cập phiếp chuyên cho chọn nôn chi để thuê lang đại cụ bệt bị chạm cá bị đất phía ba thay tom thổ cập phiếp chuyên cho chọn nơi ở bờ tàu có cho thay ngay chi đập bổ mui khai mình nia chi nam bị bọn đập bổ mui bàn cắt thầm co bị giật thanh đập phiếp thổ cập phiếp bao luôn nôn chi để thay ngay ní thá miền đại ca đại chư khăn nong chư chư cây ram rái ông quỳ du một bàn nâng bàn phật đo là nô sa thá thông mọi ông dìm ra anh này nhát ở lục nôn chia châu rùm tam nam cây chấm đại ca sạm đại ca ở pi bản tục mũi thật là cầm sa sạm mặc cả đi hay phải lưu một thanh này đang dùng tam bắt bình nhát này bị thiên bách thời buổi pram này bị thiên tây khăn ông ở vô tàu có ông nhầm ra anh này nhát ở chuyên chọc chọn nôn chia châu rùm đang tam nam cây chấm đại ca sạm mặc cả bị chấm ngái pi bản tục không khôn mũi thật là cầm sa sạm mặc cả đi tam để cho bộ co sốt tua tầm rạp giờ pi sạm đại ca bình một thanh này có bị bộc lực này thổi tua, chủ yếu là còn thổi tua, sản phẩm chuyên chụp cho nuôi chia ai chiều rùm được tạm đang cây chấm đại ca sản phẩm cá bị chấm ngái, khăn một lồng phết để cây chấm đại ca sản phẩm cá sản phẩm này nè, đại chiệp bắt đầu từ này ông biết bắt đầu từ cái chuyên từ miền tây bị cà phê cái này lộn nuôi chia nằm bay miền nào cá mình to cá tăng sầm nuôi để đào chụp bùa nẹt chấm điền, bằng cái mã toán là lộn cái bài tờ cà phê, bắt xong chơi lộn cái thảm để nhà rồng ăn tại chiến คือก็ยังก็บานสู่แบบบอลตัวหนึ่งเลยเอียนคือเอ่อใบแอนด์เดอะเพอร์เพสออฟแอตวอสจูสเตอร์มูนคือเอ่อใบแอนด์เดอะ
គឺគឺជាអាពាក់ព័ន្ធទៅនឹងអ្វីដែលយើងបានដឹងនៅក្នុង <coughs> 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 ហើយយូននឹងគឺសម្ដែងទៅទៅទៅទៅទៅទៅទៅទៅទៅទៅទៅទៅទៅទៅទៅទៅទៅទៅទៅទៅទៅទៅទៅទៅទៅទៅទ
Tìm mối Nhưng xong lực tìm mối ตาวิอาจทําเมียนชมุคําหุยได้เด้บ่ um, again, uh, human subjects protocols at the University of ຈັ່ງບັນຊັນຈະອາດລູກອາດຈະເຊຈຊມຸນັ້ນຕາຕາລາວນັ້ນຄືອ່າຈະຊມຸບໍ່ກໍລາມີນະລູກ <coughs> 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 Um, so, uh, thank you, Mr. Co-Defense Lawyer. Um, so, again, uh, in order to protect the human rights of the people who do research the protocol, the questions whether or not we can reveal who they are, I again might to go back there. I know I would need to go back there. I know I would need to go back there. ແລະຫນ້າຄາໃຫ້ໄປຄາຫາຄືໃຫ້ປິນິດຕະເລອາການຖືສົມພຽບຂອງຂ້ອຍນໍາໃຫ້ການປິດສິດຂອງບຸກ
Hay nó không sẽ phải cứ miền bắc cô mua chụp luôn tiết đại mình toàn bàn bình chạy chụp mua đúng. Lực chiều ti hò mua chụp luôn. Chỉ sang để yên cứ xôn xôn xài bay đập bằng phở đập ở đó đập bốn. Hay cái bàn bình chạy thà nó không sẽ phải cầm chiều chiều tập bật tay nữa. Cứ cái miền bắc miền hay yên ân sơn lệ tại miền lệ sơn sơn sài sập bay đông bờ lạp mùi nước ở bàn chợ thà và cô nó có chia áp đặt tiền nâng chia mình trai nâng không sao mày nữa hay nhâm sơn bẩn tỏ tiết tiết đã cứ thà nhâm hạ bị đôi chia khơi thà miền cả thưa bắt sầm phía si chấm rơi nâng cứ bẩn tát thưa vài con nông chấm nào mà đôi chấm luận đập tới một hai tệ ta trầm trời đại đệ tệ Thank you, Mr. Co-Defense Lawyer. So the reference you have to the key people who apparently are in the book that was based on the help of the reader and the reference to people who might talk about so if they forget who the person is reading, they'll be able to refer back to it. I should note that in doing so, an anthropology team will have key informants who are experts who know more information and those also tend to be the people you talk to and those also tend to be the people you talk to and more who are better called in-depth interviews most of the interviews with. So within the number of informants, we have everyday casual conversations, which are very common in the interviews. You have interviews with people in the room. 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 You have interviews Tạm biệt cả sai chưa bao giờ mình không khai đồng bộ nữa. Nhưng chưa chưa chỉ mua mình nuôi chỉ trả được miền bắc bây giờ được không sao mai nuôi hơi dân có miền cà chua cà ông kết được không cà sai chưa nữa. Đảm bảo chủ yếu nhất đại vị trí này mua đại sầm khăn đại dân chỉ yếm của một con miền pi ở bờ rạch bị mình nuôi từ ở đại bộ phận hay sập hơi dân nước có dân miền sơn sơn được không sạn đại cả đích ấy nước có dân dân phải phải không sầm nằm riêng còn từ năm chục năm trước cứ có dân có miền chục năm đã dân sẽ xây lại tam giác cảng kê hay miền hay dân có miền sao chẹp quan chẹp quan từ năm chục năm luôn mình nói tới dân sắp về thì cha này nó không sắp về với dân nó cứ dân ai bị nứt khơi nợ sầm lên thì có một tờ báo đại kê bàn lên làm chẹp quan từ năm ngày rưng ra chỉ có đấy đại phần hai thì bắt đi sau rồi bao nhiêu đại nước nông khung po chẹp quan từ hai cái đại bàn cả làng nước nông sầm mai cầm chìm chìm thập bát tay đại việt chẹp quan từ năm bây giờ vẫn có cái đôi chìm bây giờ Lại bị xa hay cả bất nước cứ nhầm có miền cả thì cả sắc xa xa chiều tầm bốn trăm năm cao bốn cao tám đẹp bòn tận năng cả cả nghĩa xa chiều nó không tới cam chia nó hay nhầm có rồi này tới cam chia này nhầm cả sự bi lực tầm bốn nó cứ nhầm bàn mà tới cam chia chỉ tràn đong hay nhầm có bàn thưa cả sầm phiêm nó chỉ tràn hay tới tụ bàn chậm nè đang chỉ tràn đẹp bòn tận năng à vậy đại dương bàn liên số hay nhầm có bàn sầm phiêm nó chỉ tràn ในรูปของคนสมัยนู้นไอจีวีเซฟบอกว่าเจียไตตะกรรมผิดบาลในเบรกยมสุขศาสตร์ชาวจีนนั้นอ่าชนะการสืบสวนการสืบพรำในชน
um, the material that is uniquely coming from you and maybe saying this um, how many key informants as you call them um, did you talk to um, you yourself um, that formed the source one of those three sources uh, thank you Mr. Co-Defense Lawyer uh, so again the first month I arrived I spoke to at least 95 people uh, many more so within the village I'm sure hundreds of people there I believe the census was there were about 500 people um, so I don't imagine that those 100 people are all key informers who are the ones that you can see the informers how many so again this is so again Mr. Defense Co-Lawyer maybe it's a bit difficult to convey ethnographic research because it's different perhaps than historical research, psychological research, sociological research, research of political science, people working in surveys. This is done over a long period in a given locality. In a sense, while the, if you want a quantitative, how many people did I interview multiple times, something like that, but it doesn't get to the heart of what anthropologists do because that's a one piece of a much broader undertaking. And again, to go back to my goal of trying to convey the lived experience of the people from this village while unpacking the cultural dimensions of genocide, that was my objective. So if you talk about just key informants in a way, everyone is, is in a way, everyone's in a way, their experience is important. I talked to many people about their experiences. I selected a certain number of individuals to focus upon to present the narrative. Uh, there are perhaps half a thousand people I interviewed more than two or three times. Um, but I don't want to say that I have four or five key interviews. I mean, everybody's, I have many stories reams of documentation yeah, um, uh, and I don't want to and maybe it's difficult because of the nature of anthropological um, research and the methods being distinct in terms of the lived experience part of it uh, in contrast to other disciplines uh, but again and, you know, so one answer is many many different key informants because I heard many stories talked to many people um, but in the book I focus on a smaller number because it's, this isn't a report, it's an analysis, and they're different undertakings. I understand what you're saying. Um, uh, I, I do hope you understand our perspective. Um, we need somehow to be able to be in a position to verify um, the veracity of your sources. Uh, human sources, uh, and the reliability of those sources, um, whether they are in any way representative of the region. Um, but I suppose it would be that that would not be possible for any of the parties, really, uh, in this courtroom. If, if that is a yes, then I will move on. Uh, I will move on. 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 Uh, thank you, Mr. Co-Defense Lawyer. Um, I don't think that I would say yes to that. As I mentioned uh, yesterday, uh, what I found remarkable, even since I've been here, is the fact that their support has gathered an enormous amount of information, including information from the Alpensium uh, district, including down to Prala uh, that dovetails directly directly mirrors the experiences that I represent in my book. Uh, you have this individual who you think is Tiep, who conveys information that talks about the Jamming system and another person who uh, the co-prosecutors mentioned yesterday talked about taking Jams out and executing them at Tulbang, which talked about Wapanam Pro, Panam Sarai. Um, so I think uh, a, an enormous amount of what I've said, regardless of the sources, is there before you on the record through these other interviews that have taken place. It's in the court record, in a sense. Um, so, as I said before, I had to work through the method of triangulation as a graduate student uh, again, this is in the period 1994-1995. Uh, 
where there were no cell phones. Hai. I drove around on a moped. I uh, uh, tried to track people uh, down as best I could. Uh, and I'm glad to see that the information that I presented in my book uh, seems to have been largely accurate and supported by documents that are officially in the court record, including the destruction of the Johns, which, uh, again, the second of that read out in court. Um, so, so let, 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 let me let me let me you again. Um, um, you actually touched upon another problem. Um, uh, you seem to be mixing uh, your post-2000 uh, uh, knowledge with whatever uh, you have uh, observed in this courtroom while serving a uh, So that uh, makes it very difficult for us to focus on the uh, really uh, 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 resources uh, 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 were ពន្តែយើងនៅទីនេះយើងដល់ចេញពីបញ្ហាប្រភពព័ត៌មានដែលលោកយកមកសំហាងនៅក្នុងសភាលោកតែប៉ុណ្ណោះ Twenty-five people in detail, but I talked to three hundred. Uh, 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 this, this is, I guess, a different approach. Very large is, is different for me and you, probably. Uh, so, if it is possible, if you, can, if you can just say so, perhaps you could give a number of people and then explain, I don't know, 25 with whom I did, and then please explain what you did with them. And other people, of, I don't know, with whom I interacted and talked to them. But the number of my cousins are picked. If you can give them. 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 Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, so again, uh, the research, uh, you know, perhaps I could ask for a point of clarification as well about whether I'm only supposed to speak about my knowledge based on this book or if I'm supposed to speak more broadly about my expertise as a genocide scholar, as someone who has continued to interview and study for this period. Um, but I guess that would be, am I restrained to the period of 1994, 1995? That's, I'm, I'm somewhat confused. We need precise questions to clarify that. We're here to see if we are able to somehow verify what we said. Um, what we have on the case file is your book. Uh, that is the basis. But when you're saying, uh, uh, I observed this in the Duke trial, uh, uh, I don't know exactly what you observed. Uh, so I need to pinpoint uh, uh, why, uh, why I made that remark. Did, did I understand you correctly to get somewhere? Yeah? Your last questions were pertaining to the book, to the sources of what did I understand? So perhaps... This is clarified. Can you give us numbers as to the sources exclusive for the book? Um, I don't have any specific numbers for the Thank you, Your Honor, and thank you, Mr. Code Defense Lawyer. Um, so again, had I known before I came here that this information would be requested, I would have gone and systematically reviewed my records. I don't have my records with me. Some of the information is in the book. So, with understanding that I can't tell you for sure, because I would need to check systematically, I can give you some guesses. I would say that if you talk about people who I spoke to on a you know, from more than one interview, as sort of the beginning of it, uh, there were probably at least you know, 10 to 20 people who were in multiple interviews. Um, if I talk about people who I interviewed once, uh, as I said before, you know, sat in their houses for uh, half hour, hour, sometimes more, two hours, depends on the person. Uh, you know, we so the first 95 households go off, and then many more after that. I would say there's got to be 150 to 200 uh, conversations with people 
uh, uh, yeah. in Pom Pom Chom City. In other words, my research, for example, I did research on the education sector in Pom Pom Chom City. I did interviews there as well. Um, I did a variety of other types of research. So besides this one village, uh, there were an enormous number of places where I did interviews and I went back to Phnom Penh and I interviewed uh, some people who worked and who had formerly worked at S21. Uh, at the time, or uh, a couple of other, one, maybe at least one other person, I have to check my records uh, as I did archival research. Uh, so I don't know if that provides a bit more guidance, but if we think of pools, there's this first smaller pool there's more extensive interviewing, and then there's a much larger second pool where you know, there's significant conversations that are taking place, but it's not repeated extended interviews. And then outside of that, there's the much larger pool of everyday conversations that are taking place. But I think it's important, again, to emphasize and contrast with other disciplines where sometimes people uh, come in with a survey, do an interview for an hour, go take off and leave. I was living people, in that in anthropology participant observation is absolutely critical, as important as interviews. Um, I'm not sure if we can answer that. Um, we might be looking to quote something you yourself. Uh, so that, um, maybe that might be helpful in understanding uh, my question. Uh, in, one of your writings that is E3 slash 9703, page 2, uh, you noted that um, apart from the, and I quote you, inevitable methodological, tactical, and logistical problems that arise at every stage of uh, data gathering some the difficulty of verifying the reliability of sources, evaluating statistics, comparing official documents, testimonies of eyewitnesses, genocide studies are further complicated by purely political considerations. Um, actually, I'm just, uh, this is not something that you said yourself. You were quoted as having said that. Um, uh, I believe in my new current weekly, so I apologize for that. But that is exactly, I think, um, the problem that you might have signaled in relation to anthropological research and the same problem that you commented on that. Uh, thank you, Mr. Codefense Lawyer. So again, I don't have the text in front of me. I have reviewed the text. Um, as is the case with all of us, when we do interviews, they're sometimes selective, so again, uh, I don't even know the year of this, so. But having said that, um, yesterday um, I spoke that absolutely when I was there from uh, 1994 to 1995, it was a completely different situation in terms of doing field work. The Khmer Rouge, as I said, were active. Um, there was a village from Mies, uh, actually, where Uwen was from. Uh, you know, and I actually, I should add, I also did research there and interviewed people there uh, where there were a lot of former Khmer Rouge, but there are also been massive purges of the people who have lived in the village because they were connected to Goh Tuan. Um, at the time, uh, the Khmer Rouge were still fighting, the civil war was ongoing. Uh, documents had been destroyed uh, by elements, and so the way you have to proceed with information is the best you can to listen and talk to people and then to confirm through the method of triangulation I mentioned where you try and talk to people and see if a narrative emerges through that. Talk to the person who's being talked about, for example, in the case of Tiap, uh, case of Kel, uh, and then again see if you can put together a picture that makes sense. Uh, and, uh, you know, now, with an enormous amount of information that's available, and by and large, very much uh, confirmation. You cited Michael Vickery's uh, book as well, and he actually talks about Region 41 and the account that he provides based on his interviews with refugees. Uh, actually, parallels the account that I'm presenting, where he says the conditions there got worse in 1977 when the Southwest Padre arrived. Uh, so I think there's an enormous amount of data that supports the account that I'm providing including 
uh, witness interviews that are on record uh, with this court that very directly parallel what I found. So, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Nsnao. I'll interrupt you again. I don't think um, I will get the answer that I'm looking for. So, uh, let me move now to the third um, source, uh, the, your study or review of the original uh, documents. Um, I've, um, I did a search uh, in your book, in your footnotes, um, and uh, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that I counted a total of uh, 44 documents uh, that you have used. Um, they, are, they are divided into um, four or five categories, um, about eight um, FIBIS, Reports. I can only comment on why can we produce some lane on Trachet, Fabi, about the number of May, seven confessions. Um, about six revolutionary flags. Look, you, I guess I don't part about the number of four or five. Uh, DK documents such as uh, decisions of the committee. Uh, um, some documents that are pronounced. Hi, can I move your exam with your room? Your mock be a banana. Some other material and about seven or eight DC cam documents. I can say mock be a general exam with your room. I can say documents. I can say you would have addition to my scholarship that existed when you wrote your book in addition to the scholarship that you wrote. Thank you, Mr. Co-Defense Lawyer. Um, again, without going back uh, and looking, I can't verify, but you seem to have done a count. Uh, you've given an interpretation of the sources. Um, I can't sound broadly correct, um, I can tell, but I think more to the point is, again, as with key informants and with the people you talk to in the village, when you write something, you can't put everything into the text. Uh, so the number, for example, I think the Phoebus documents were much more available. I look at far more Phoebus documents. Uh, as, uh, as is evident from uh, earlier discussions, the documents that were presented before, there's an enormous amount of repetition uh, in, the, uh, in the discursive rhetoric in CPK documents. There's a lot of repetition. Uh, so I think you could pull in dozens and dozens of different documents, but I'm sure I reviewed more documents than ended up in the footnotes. And part of the reason I condensed it down is because the publishers are concerned about the length of the book and I really don't want you to pack too much in. Uh, and it's repetitive. So uh, exactly. I would say that, uh, again, the number of documents I refer to is a broader pool, uh, especially with the Phoebus broadcast, which were more available. Uh, I understand, but I believe in your dissertation you don't really use uh, additional documents. Obviously, in your dissertation, you are supposed to list all the sources. But um, let, let, let me move on because I don't have that much time. Uh, one or two uh, additional questions in respect of um, uh, the documents. Uh, you are using uh, confessions of people detained in S21. And uh, now this court is strictly forbidden um, to use any of the content of the S21 confessions. What is it that you did um, in terms of reliability? Um, Thank you, Mr. Co Defense Lawyer. Uh, so, again, uh, at the time I was writing, I was aware. Uh, that the confessions couldn't be looked at as fact in any manner. Um, one of the primary things I want to do, uh, and again, it's hard to imagine now uh, because of the databases that exist. So uh, in terms of finding RIA, Ray Sim, I didn't have a computer I could go and punch in a number to. I had to go to the Tool Slang Museum, and I asked them. They didn't know where his confession was, uh, spent so, okay, okay, an enormous amount of time okay, trying to find okay, his okay. confession. Again, there's no automated system. Finally, I found it. Um, but, you know, in this case, and this was one of the main reasons I went there, is people had talked uh, a lot about 
Boituan as being part of the Boituan network, but also the experience of, of Riyab, who had run Wat Phnom Parok Nam Sarai, uh, was very significant to this village, so I wanted to trace out and find the person because there was a story that he had actually tried to rebel at one point and had detonated some explosives uh, and failed to do so. Uh, and I was also curious to look at his confession as part of this larger story, but the story of that detonation, as I say, came from Park Kel, told it to me, and then seemed to be confirmed in some form or another by the confession, but I was also in terms of exploring the cultural dimensions of genocide, as I said before, interested in the structure of confessions, the way that they reflected patronage networks, right, relationships of dependency, uh, and as well the way the narratives were constructed so that they were an inversion of revolutionary histories. And so I didn't really rely on the content of the confessions to draw a narrative. I looked at structural factors and, you know, again, the fact that we confessed to having to have the detonated, the detonating these explosives resonated with what Hell had told me. And so in terms of the method of triangulation, that again is, to me, suggests an affirmation of what he's saying because Kel has absolutely no way of knowing what happened to Rip, and in fact, he had no idea where he went. Um, so, so, would you, sorry, interrupt, sorry to interrupt. Would you then agree with um, Chandler, Minister, um, citing Heather, that under certain circumstances, um, these confessions do have a certain probative value or reliability to them? Uh, thank you, Mr. Co Defense Lawyer. Um, again, I wouldn't want to make a broad sweeping statement, but for my purposes, maybe I can answer that given my objectives and what I want to do and understand from the confessions. Uh, it had value in terms of revealing the, the, the structure of patronage relationships that exist and structure socio, uh, social relations in Cambodia on many levels were operative and were reflected by the confessions and were part of the way that the people at S21 were thinking uh, in terms of the way they were purging networks and the language that was used dovetailed with the language that was used by people on the ground. So again, this is part of the process of triangulation that we're doing. Uh, but as again, when I do, was doing the research in 1994 95, it's a completely different experience. And it's hard to convey how hard it was to get things like find a confession where you, now you just punch in an ERN number and it appears on the screen. It took days of work. Um, and then one um, additional question to uh, use of documents. I've, I've noted that um, you didn't uh, use PC interviews uh, people who might have been in a position to say certain things about um, the rebellions and rebellions that by uh, you, you mentioned uh, often in your book. Um, is, that, is, that, is that a correct assessment that you didn't use any um, uh, thank you, Mr. Co Defense Lawyer. Uh, so, again, at the time, 1994 to 1995, um, I believe the uh, Yale Cambodian Genocide Project. Uh, had gotten underway, and I believe, I can't remember the year that DCCAM became an independent non-governmental organization. It may be 1997, you'll have to check the record, I can tell you for sure. Um, so if we're talking about the period when I was doing my research, 1994 to 1995, um, it's very difficult to find, even find the DCCAM office because I think they experienced, uh, well, you have to check. Let, let, let me interrupt you there. Your, your book is, I think the manuscript was finished in 2004. Uh, so I'm not referring to your work in 1994, mm -hmm. but I'm referring to your work um, finished in 2004, uh, Is it correct that um, you didn't use any statements or individuals with DCCAM 
Uh, thank you, Mr. Co-Defense Lawyer. So, again, I was trying to stick to the period that you wanted me to speak about, which is 1994 to 1995, but maybe it would help if I elaborate on the process of writing the book and how it came to be in the sequence, uh, which maybe will clarify some of the confusion. Okay, so I, I did the initial field work from 1994 to 1995. I returned to my university. In 1997, my dissertation was published. Um, I didn't return to Cambodia until 2000. In 2000, um, as I began the process of revising my dissertation into book form, in 2000, I did do research at DCCAM, I believe, uh, for looking primarily, if I recall correctly, at uh, confessions and DK documents, for example. I believe that's when I found uh, Laura's life history, his biography that's included in my book. Uh, and if, if I remember correctly, I came back in 2003. But in academic books, you have a period of peer review that takes place. That peer review process can take up to a year. I can't remember how long because you get evaluations and you revise the manuscript based on the evaluation of your peers. So actually, the book manuscript was probably completed maybe in 2002, again, peer review. Once a book is completed, after peer review, it's been accepted. It takes an entire year for it to come out. So the book, to say it's finished in 2004, is inaccurate. It actually was done earlier, and then underwent this period of peer review. I came back in 2000, I'm sure I reviewed DC Camp. But, you know, for example, their magazine, Searching for the Truth, I believe, began in 2000. You may remember better than me. So again, the amount of documentation that they had but now if you go to their office, uh, you go to the public information room, you can procure documents very quickly. But this was the early phase, and things were much harder then. And again, it's hard to convey the experience of doing research is very different. Um, so I didn't, because of the historical moment in which I was working at DC Cam, that documentation was not as readily available to me. Since then, I've looked at many issues of searching for the truth, and I've returned, you know, at different times to their uh, to their archives, as well as consulted many other sources and interviewed many other people. Uh, thank you. I'll, I'll move on now um, so to um, the subject that we left um, that we didn't finish uh, yesterday, and that is the, uh, the qualification of the word you, words mean, etc. Um, yesterday I um, tried to um, elicit an answer from you in relation to late King Father's uh, speech, uh, King Father's speech before the UN Security Council. Um, you declined to answer because you first wanted to read uh, before him, I think, uh, what he actually said. Uh, I hope you were in a position last night uh, or this morning uh, to have a look, uh, look at that speech. Um, and I would like now to read a few excerpts of that speech uh, and then ask um, your comments, especially in relation to uh, Vietnam or the Vietnamese being called uh, land swallowing uh, aggressors. Um, Mr. President, I believe there is still no um, Khmer or French uh, translation of it. I only have the English text, so I will read it very slowly. It is a uh, document, as, I, as we discussed before, E3-735. Hmm? And uh, I'll be reading um, a few paragraphs from his uh, very long speech. Uh, I will start with... Um, Paragraph 75. For Judge Lavergne, I just got a note from the team that the speech is available in French. I accept a video on the case file that's in 3 slash 736R. For, for, the, for the background, Mr. President, um, I'm reading from the Security Council official records. Uh, the 2008 meeting in, in January 1979. So here is, uh, originally in French, uh, King Father 
นี่สัมปรากาศอัตยตักแฟนรอมเซนนุได้เยี่ยงตัวกรมปุกษาสอบองการสับชีเชียไทยนุกนององการนุนุตรองกับทางการจัดสปรัม But on the very morrow of the final final victory, on the day of seventy-five, the victory of the Vietnam, and the wake of the reunification of the two Vietnams, the Socialist Republic of Vietnam decided, cold-bloodedly, to embark. Upon a very special operation, his ultimate goal was nothing less than to swallow up the little Kampuchea, just as the starving boa constrictor would fling itself upon an innocent animal. Paragraph 78. My saying what I have just said about Vietnam does not constitute interference in internal affairs of the country. There is a necessity which makes it my duty to create a better understanding of the reasons why my country has always had to put up with acts of aggression and other armed attacks from Vietnam, which have been going on since the 15th century. From the 15th to the beginning of the 20th century, in spite of the bitter and indomitable resistance of the army and people of Kampuchea, succeeded in swallowing up a good half of Kampuchea. That half became what is now what is known today as South Vietnam, and the South Kampuchea. Paragraph. Uh, 79. Although this is inconceivable in the 1970s, when all the talk is of respect for the Charter of the United Nations and the just principles of non-alignment, the Socialist Republic of Vietnam, a member of the United Nations, is a member of the family of non Aligned countries is not embarrassed by any scruples. Greatly encouraged by its multi-form alliance, particularly effective military alliance with the USSR, one of the two world superpowers, drawing comfort from the total and unconditional support accorded by the two powers of the Warsaw Pact, with the exception of Romania. Here comes respecting the good old traditions of shamelessly swallowing up small neighbors whenever the opportunity presents itself. And motivated also, we must point out, by the keen appetite that it had nurtured for many years. The Socialist Republic of Vietnam came to the point of launching an all-out attack with all the power of its Hitlerite armed forces for the conquest of Kampuchea. The irresistible advance of a host of armored tanks and cars ແລະຖ້າເຈີມັນສະຕາມໂດຍຈຳນວນຫຼິດສະຄຣິດໃນຊີວິດແລະເຊິ່ງເປັນຈຳນວນຫຼິດສະຄຣິດໃນຊີວ
ពីអគ្រតកម្មនិងការប្រឆាំងដល់ពួកអស់ពើមកលើប្រទេសកម្ពុជាដែលបង្កឡើងដោយសារធិរណៈសង្គមយោបាយណាមដែលបង្កឡ
are of high level of incitement towards violence uh, and that it's not accurate to compare a speech given by the late King Father uh, to compare the two. I mean, I could continue to read this, you could read that, and they're completely different. They, the one point of similarity which you point out is that, as I mentioned yesterday, there are a set of stereotypes that exist if you go and talk to people about the legend of the master's teeth, people know that. So there are a set of understandings that come at different points in time to be mobilized in different sorts of ways. Uh, but the point that comes from our discussion of the use of the term UN in the context of decay is that this is a time where you have discourse that's vehement, it's strong, and it's a form of racist incitement. Um, and I don't think it's appropriate to try and draw a parallel between what the late King Father said and what is said in a broadcast like that. Let, let, me, let, me, let me move away from the word here. Um, is it, are, are you saying that when he gave that speech uh, before the Security Council, he was uh, pressurized, uh, under pressure to say these words? And if that is indeed your opinion, um, how would you then explain uh, similar words he said um, in his um, press conference in Beijing just before this, and his subsequent su support of the CPK and the DK regime uh, the 10 subsequent years when um, DK was still holding its seat uh, in the UN. Uh, thank you, Mr. Co-Defense Lawyer. Um, very briefly, I think that if you want clarification on this point, you should speak to perhaps the royal biographer of the late King Father, the Heldres, who talked to him extensively. Um, but I think the point, to me, is if you take the words that you read and you compare those to the text I read, they are completely different, even if there are similarities, small similarities, in terms of the mobilization of metaphors. As I said from the very beginning, even the use of the word Yuan can be used in a banal, everyday manner. Uh, but it's when it's recruited, I have to interrupt you. You're, you're, you're circumventing, I believe, the answer to my question. The question is, is it your opinion that he was somehow under pressure to utter these words, the words of aggression and swallowing, that they were put in his mouth, uh, and if he didn't, then something would happen. Is that your uh, Thank you, Mr. Co-Defense Lawyer. I understand uh, your concern for clarification. Uh, perhaps I should say that the basis of what I said comes from having read his memoirs a while ago, uh, from some knowledge of the history, but that to be certain and to get an expert informed opinion, you should ask someone like Julio Heldres, who is his biographer, had numerous conversations with him. But that, based on my knowledge, uh, is the answer that I would provide. So I can't provide you with a certain answer because I never had the honor of meeting and speaking with the uh, King Father. Um, let us move away for a while from the late King Father's speech. Um, are you in a position to give your opinion as to what, um, for instance, in the United States, um, an important uh, scholar was testifying about to U.S. Congress about these um, Conditions that Vietnam had and referred to by um, late King Father. What was the scholarly um, view in the United States in 1978 and before um, about Vietnam's ambitions to the Thank you, Mr. Co-Defense Lawyer. Um, I think that in order to be specific, I would need a specific reference text. Um, again, I reviewed the documents primarily relating to uh, the DK period. I didn't, there are many documents I was given to review more than I could possibly read. 
Uh, so I, I, it's not I fresh. I'm not sure what you're speaking about. So if you could read from a document, I can let you know if I could qualify to offer an opinion in that, in that regard. Uh, I'd have to be more specific uh, to, uh, to guide you a bit. Um, I'm now referring to document E3-2370. Uh, it is uh, uh, report um, written by, I believe at that time, uh, one of the most eminent scholars on Vietnam's policy, Douglas Pike, the foreign, uh, foreign uh, State Department officer and uh, scholar as well. And um, on page 17 of that document, in the GIN 0013396, and French um, 0034474748, and 48, he says the following, and he's testifying or, or giving his uh, expert opinion to U.S. Congress in, um, I believe, November 78, October 78. Vietnamese communists long have regarded the Federation of Indochina as the proper ultimate political configuration for the peninsula. Of necessity, this would require the Cambodian and Laotian Christians, or at least find rulers in the two countries who are amenable to the idea. In creating a federation of Indochina, the Vietnamese are no longer hurt. A little bit further, Cambodian behavior in the war is not as irrational uh, yeah, as appears. Uh, there is logic both to Cambodian strategy and rhetoric, particularly when viewed in the light of Cambodian history. Um, I've helped you a bit. Um, can you react on what Douglas Pike um, is saying to the U.S. Congress in October 1978? Uh, thank you, Mr. Co-Defense Lawyer. Uh, you know, I am aware of that. Uh, report. I read it many, many years ago. It's not fresh, um, but I can go based on, on what you said. I, I think, again, I would agree that uh, if you look at the position of the leaders of DK, and I'm, I think I'm answering more broadly, I think that there absolutely is a logic uh, to what they're saying and to portray them as irrational, it's not accurate, whether that logic reflects historical reality is another question, but I think it would certainly be a mistake to simply dismiss what's being said about, for example, the intentions of Vietnam. At the same time, it's important to know that acknowledging that there's a logic, again, does not mean that that logic is historically accurate. And I think it's important in trying to understand DK, to understand the way that the leaders felt and the way they perceived relations in terms of Vietnam, I think that's all very important. But again, to say there's a logic does not mean that it's historical truth that needs to be evaluated. I would argue that Douglas Pike um, is very clairvoyant um, because three months um, before Vietnam's invasion in the year of Asian Sea, he sort of predicted what actually happened. So isn't, it, isn't his testimony a reflection of what was about to happening only three months later? Uh, <coughs> thank you, Mr. Co-Defense Lawyer. Um, you know, I, I don't know him, uh, but I think probably given the escalating conflict uh, between Democratic Kampuchea and, and Vietnam at the time, uh, the buildup of troops, uh, uh, and I assume there was intelligence that saw this, and I think a number of people, I, I would have to go back and look, for example, at Nayan Chanda's reports, his testimony on record here that may affirm it, uh, that I don't think it was a, probably a surprise to that many people uh, when uh, 
the Vietnamese backed army came in uh, uh, and a couple a few months later so uh, is it surprising uh, I don't think probably it's all that surprising uh, probably it's just based on intelligence that was pretty evident to people at the time given the conflict that was taking place and I would say probably newspaper both Richard Dutman and Elizabeth Becker um, were informed by the State Department that they didn't think an invasion was about to happen. But leaving that aside, do you know anything about um, how, not scholars, but how um, the United States itself viewed Vietnam's ambitions? More particularly, do you know how President Ford and Secretary of State Kissinger viewed the ambitions, let's say, November 75. Thank you, Mr. President. I'm not sure whether this is... In uh, this witness's area of expertise, he may feel answering the question, but it seems to be made for the state. It's just an observation of the state. I believe um, Mr. Hinton has offered all kinds yeah, of expertise. Uh, លោកហេនតុនគឺអ្នកជំនាញគ្រប់ផ្នែកទាំងអស់តាមពីវិទ្យាសាស្ត្រនយោបាយបំពាត់ទិសាស្ត្រនៅក្នុងរដ្ឋ